Hello everyone, I'm Annika Scott and this is my contribution to this extremely special 2020 virtual British Horn Society Festival celebrating the Society's 40th birthday. I thought it would be uh, a nice idea for me to share four reasons why I think everybody should experience playing the natural horn and some tips as to how to improve these skills which are part and parcel of learning this wonderful instrument. One of the things that can be quite challenging about playing the natural horn, especially once you get outside the key of F, is pitching the notes. I think we forget just how ingrained we've become in that particular tonality. F becomes like a prism through which we hear and perceive everything. If you're experimenting with the natural horn, try and get away from the F crook as soon as you can. It's well worth focusing on integrating a range of crooks into your practice, especially the extremes of the high alto or low basso crooks, which have their own particular challenges. You might find playing the other crooks a little disorientating at first, especially the further you go away from F. This is when you really have to engage with what we are doing when we pitch notes. We have to really develop our inner ear, be mindful of the intervals between the notes you are playing. Um, often singing intervals helps a great deal, as does coming up with any memoirs to remember the distances. Another great tip for improving your sense of pitch on the natural horn is to practice with a drone. Set the drone to the key of the instrument or the key of the piece. Remember the two are not necessarily the same thing. And then use the drone almost like a type of compass point. Think vertically about what the interval difference is between the note you're playing and the drone, or think horizontally about the interval differences between the consecutive notes. An added benefit of this is that it will really help and develop your sense of tuning. And of course, better pitching, better intonation are all skill sets that will benefit your modern horn playing. This second point is very closely connected with how playing the natural horn helps our sense of pitch. In the 18th and 19th centuries, the horn becomes a, more and more a key element of the orchestra. The horn becomes an essential member of the harmony section, that is to say, the wind section, the group that provides so much of the harmonic underpinning. You can see how important we are when, if you look at, say, the average Mozart opera, I think as horn players are some of the most, uh, the most busy wind players. We're also very closely allied with the basses and what we're doing so often is integral in terms of holding everything together. As pitching can often be a challenge, we have to really understand what is happening harmonically. If nothing else, it helps open up our ears to allies within the ensemble and working as a team helps. Playing the natural horn can massively help your understanding of harmony and therefore our understanding of our role in the music at any time. Aim to really open up your ears and work out where you fit in the ensemble. Maybe we're octaves with the basses and need to gravitate towards them or maybe our focus needs to be elsewhere. Knowing where we fit in harmonically helps us shape what we do with our phrasing, shape how we balance and ultimately helps our pitching. This becomes even more important if we're playing either not in the key of the piece or a horn section with horns in different keys, for example, Mozart Symphony No. 14 G minor. A lot of natural horn players can find this piece discombobulating, shall we say, at first, with the first horn being in B flat and the second horn being in G. You keep hearing your colleague play notes which you can't and it is easy to be lured off course knowing your harmonic role, knowing who are your harmonic allies, and knowing where the other musicians are who might be playing notes that will help guide you, really helps you in these contexts. The natural horn offers us the opportunity to experiment with the special colours available to our instrument. And we have two ways, two inherent ways, in which we can explore aspects of colour or timbre. The first comes with the gradation of the stopped and open notes of the instrument. And 
with practice, we can utilise these notes to a greater or lesser extent. I think it's very hard for us to conceive of what it could be like to have never heard the homogenous sound of the modern horn. It's hard to forget that sound world. But when one looks more widely at how instruments have developed historically, we start to see some similar patterns. For example, originally woodwind instruments had very few keys and depended on what we call forked fingerings, which gives every single note a special colour, a special shade. And the modern equivalents have a huge number of keys which even these things out. Similarly, the piano had distinct different registers whilst we have a uniform sound today. Composers and musicians exploited these terrible differences which makes me question whether the ultimate goal on the natural horn is necessarily to hide or negate these colours. There's a great line from Jacques-Francois Gallet in the mid-19th century in which he describes the use of the stop notes on the horn as being one of the most important means of expression, going on to say that it adds an immense variety and inexpressible charm to the beauty of the instrument. I love those lines. Occasionally I've spoken to colleagues about the pros and cons of adding stop notes on modern horns in relevant repertoire and relevant places. So, for example, in a Beethoven symphony, could you add the stop notes? For me, this slightly hides the second of these major aspects of colour on the instrument, which is the different sounds of the different crooks. Playing the natural horn is not just about the binary open versus stop notes. Each crook has its own particular character and characteristic, and we can play with this for great, to great effect. The high crooks can be mercurial, bright and zingy. The low crooks, dark, uh, mysterious or pompous. And I think if you're looking as to how to bring aspects of historically informed performance onto your modern horn playing, then adding stop notes is a little bit simplistic. Instead, look as to how you can incorporate different colours um, associated with the crooks. Through working with historical horns and performing with period instrument ensembles, I've gotten to know so much more about the history and development of our instrument. Part of the reason for this is just practical logistical considerations. As the instrument has changed, so has the way composers have written for it, and sometimes when I'm working it's really obvious what the appropriate instrument and associated techniques might be. Sometimes it's not so obvious and I need to go away and do a bit of homework and work out what the best approach might be. A disadvantage all of this is that if you're really serious about this you can end up acquiring a never-ending collection of all the various different types of horns that we have in our instrument's amazing history. It can become a bit addictive trying to find the right pit, bit, piece of kit for different pieces, but it's not just about the equipment. We're constantly learning and rethinking what we understand to be appropriate performance styles. For example, at the moment I'm mildly obsessed with portamento and listening to loads of old recordings of singers. Ultimately, what I'm trying to do when I play these instruments and experiment with performance styles is to find things that inspire me to be constantly reappraising how I approach any piece of music, as well as extending my expressive capabilities. A really good start starting place for any of this is I would always highly recommend John Humphrey's book The Early Horn. He includes a wealth of information in quite a slim volume. The case studies at the end are an excellent way into how one might approach any piece of music and the book is just a great first port of call. Similarly if you're wanting to know more about the history and context of our instrument be a member of the British Horn Society and check out the magazine that comes with membership as this constantly has excellent articles about so many aspects of our instrument. I hope that helps. I hope you enjoy this very special anniversary festival.